ML Bodybuilding Channel. J JB, today hey. we are joined by one of our favorites who's making her return to the class she should never have left. <laughs> Teresa Ivansic, how are you? Welcome. I'm good. How are you guys? Fine, fine. Thank so, good, good, good. We're happy that you came on. We were um, 2021, 2022, I'm sorry. And we can't start it without you on. That's for sure. That's, Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Quick, quick into 2021. Talk to us a little about your women's physique. Um, how did you experience women's physique? So, like, I've been in bodybuilding all my life. So whenever mm -hmm. I decided to try to go into this women's physique division, it was a lot different. I didn't feel like at home. It wasn't the same, like, even pumping up in the back. I don't know if it was because I just didn't know those type of girls, but I was just kind of like taking a gamble on like, what were the judges actually going to look for? Were they going to judge me because I'm too big? And I think I was just more worried about that. So it was just, it was completely off. Like, I mean, even John Meadows, when I got off stage, he's like, you weren't even smiling. Like you weren't even like enjoying the fact <laughs> that you're up there. So I just knew right then and there that I, I am in the wrong division. I need, I need to go back. Uh, it was Chicago, wasn't it? Yes. What place did you get? I ended up with seventh there. Yeah. And how was that for you as a champion women's bodybuilder, getting seventh in women's Yeah, that was rough because, like, I won it in 2020, and then I came back and I took, like, seventh in a total different division. So it was hard, you know, to swallow, and I just – I didn't know, like, what direction to go. Like, what did they want me to actually do next? So we were going to take a little bit of time off. He wanted me to go right into another show that was right after it. But I just, mm. I mentally, I wasn't, you know, prepared to do it because it was kind of like you were upset. Like you didn't know what direction to do. Do you keep leaning out and do women's physique or, you know, what do you do? So we just kind of took some time off. And then unfortunately within that time frame, we lost him. And we, I mean, we had, I just took the rest of the year off because I just, I lost my coach and I was just mm. devastated. So I, I didn't compete anymore. So, so that's for people who don't know, that's John Meadows who we lost last year. And yes. how did that, uh, you took the year off? Was that because of hi him or? Yeah, I, um, cause I, the way that he did things and, the, and what he did in terms of like, not just a friend and a coach, he was just a well-rounded, amazing guy. And I, I literally like my, I was heartbroken, you know, I only known him for six months and I felt like I knew him for a long time. He was like a second father to me. And wow. I just, I couldn't do it. I didn't want, I didn't want to do it. You know, I just wasn't ready. I knew my heart wasn't going to be into it because it wasn't John. I wasn't getting up in the morning and seeing his emails. You know, it just, mm. it put me in a bad place. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How much feedback, how much um, were you talking like constantly throughout the week when he was coaching you or? Yeah, we, um, so we talked like literally like probably about every four days or so. And then like when he would get other competitors ready, like Sunny and Brooke, he would text me photos you know, to see my opinion and see what I would think, because we were both on more of a business level too. So we trusted mm -hmm. each other. And then after the show was over and I decided to take some time off, John actually emailed me like shortly after. And he's like, I'm sorry. He's like, I really miss talking to you. So mm -hmm. it was like, kind of like a, just such a friendship base because we both lifted each other up and whether I was competing or not, we just weren't speaking and he mm -hmm. wanted to hear more from me, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, quick thing. Was that Brooke Walker or? Yes. Yeah. How how were you surprised, possibly surprised at the Olympia getting that amazing third place, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 I thought she could have pulled off second. You know, Ooh. I thought I, I definitely thought she could. Um and I actually that was the last text message that I had sent to John. Um, I texted him a picture of Brooke Walker and I said, she has it. She, she's got it. And this was when I think it was for the qualification. This wasn't at the Olympia. And yeah. um, he's like, are you sure? And I said, yes. And then if you look at the last physical post that John posted before he passed, it's actually a picture that I sent him because my picture is at the very bottom. So he screenshotted, you know, what I, what I gave to him. But yeah, I mean, I, she's amazing. That, that girl is completely amazing. 2022. Um, well, first of all, how did you get back into picking a show? You said you took the year off because of Meadows or the half year off. How did you get back into things? So I, I was like, you know what, I never do an early show, you know, and I was like, okay, well, I took some time off and now I'm not coming out of a show. So I have enough time to like, kind of like regroup, grow and just try something different, have a good off season, like an actual like meal plan off season. And that's what I decided to do. And we figured, you know, one of the earliest shows we're going to go ahead and jump into. So the first one was New York Pro. 
And that mm. was before Indy was announced that there was women's bodybuilding in there. Yeah. And once that was announced, I, you know, really wanted to jump in that one. I really wanted to do the very first show that was offered. Uh, mm. This off season, long off season with meal plan and everything, what changed with your physique having that long off season? You it shaped uh, weight, gain, uh, muscle, you know, different type of balance. You know, I'm literally sitting like, 10 pounds heavier and I'll probably be 10 pounds heavier this year for stage. Oh, wait, wait, you're going to be, you're going to be 10. How much did you weigh last time at the, is this the Olymp <laughs> women's bodybuilding stage or is this the women's physique stage? No, this was like bodybuilding. I was like 150. Yeah. So 150. I'm, yeah, I'm going to definitely be in the sixties this time. Wow. That's good. Yeah. That's good. good. Yeah. So I'm and, excited. And is it, where did it go? Everywhere, and I just you know, I actually like I grew my legs. I mean, everybody's been knocking me for my legs, and I really, really got way more control over them. And they've definitely grown, and I can feel it. Like I can't; it's hard to walk. Like I'm, I'm not used to that. Like it's just something that's totally different to me. And I wish it was there like a long time ago. But genetically, my legs are just that you know that lacking body part for me. But they definitely are way bigger. Uh, what did you do to go about about it? It, training it's it's the training method it's the mind muscle connection it's the positive and negatives it's not like just an up and a down movement and it's uh -huh. actually like push with the quads push with the glutes you know squeeze with the hamstrings and then that's what you know finally gave me my development and it how did you learn how did you learn that all of a sudden well I, I learned a lot of techniques from john you know and he he taught me a lot more of the control because when we were getting into the actual other upper body parts you know and such as back as chest and shoulders there were we were using kind of the same methods and when you were looking at a physique as a whole you were actually looking at them like okay what is missing we don't need to train certain exercises because that you're really well developed there so we picked what we need to bring up the most and we focus more on those type exercises mm. because uh, jb her back double by huh wait yeah. wait wait, <laughs> wait oi, oi, oi. you want me to show up with that back double by haven't you Teresa? Yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> it's the Arnold pose. You got to get the Arnold pose. Yes, yes. Oh, that's definitely true. So, Indie Pro, um, you're doing Indie Pro, but all of a sudden, we saw you switch coaches in the middle of the prep. We saw an announcement. We don't yeah. need to know why, but uh, are you happy with the new coach? Yes, I am. I'm in a static. Um, I loved working with Nassar. I, I mean, he is an amazing guy. You know, there's a he, he's an amazing team. I mean, his, his whole team is a little bit it just very very powerful you know very good mm. place things like that um it was i just need a little bit more hands-on you mm -hmm. know and and just more you know detail more detail into the training more detail into the diet more communication basically um but i'm very 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 happy with you know who i chose i feel like there's a bond there just like we had with john so mm -hmm. that's that's what i'm looking for i need more of like that that bond i don't want to just have a coach that i just check into and then we just keep moving and keep changing i want to have an actual like tight bond with somebody Okay, so you're going into Indie Pro. Um, were you ready for it? It's only a week before, so you probably were going to be ready for it anyway, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I just I, I was like I'm I'm gonna do it regardless. I mean it, it's it was literally a week away. I'm actually like central to both, so it's gonna take me about five to six hours. We're just gonna drive either direction. You know, we don't need to get any you know flights and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, Indie is definitely one of the ones that I, I I want my heart and souls into that, and then New York Pro. Vancouver was that any was that all on your mind at all because that's a week before by the way no um so actually the current coach that I have and this is one thing that I really did like about him he refuses to put any girls in the same show so he huh. only will have one girl at each show so he can you know focus just strictly on them and not like switch corners you know so it's hard to you know have two people at this type level you know with the same coach and two people in the same exact show so he mm -hmm. refuses to intermix so i thankfully he had nobody in india and he had nobody in new york so we were able to jump into both of those mm, okay yeah. well uh in the pro in the pro first jb we have mm -hmm. uh stephanie yeah mm -hmm. who has a little bit similar sh structure hasn't she mm-hmm Oh yeah, she's a good. She has very good shape. She's and all she's, over a really balanced. And she's taller, like you. She's blonde. She used yep. to be with your same coach. She's yep. from Indian Indiana, the hometown of Indie Pro. Yep. What's gonna happen there, Teresa? <laughs> I'm gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> I want uh, that qualification. What? What? 
physique qualities do you think you have that can edge out Stephanie? My conditioning is really good. Um, I've, I've been always been able to condition, you know, very, very well. So my body adapts to conditioning. So I say if it's going to be anywhere, it'll be conditioning. It's going to be conditioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Write it down. And, mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. and we have Jada Beverly, who is a very athletic. Have you competed again? Well, she was women's physique when you were women's bodybuilding. So mm -hmm. she's very athletic. And Lisa Kudrow, who is mm -hmm. former women's physique. Are you familiar with her? No. Mm -hmm. And we have Donna Salib. Yeah, I'm really good friends with her. Oh, yeah. you are. And she's yep. made she's made a lot of progress. She has. She mm -hmm. has. I, I actually remember competing with her in 2020 at the Chicago show, mm -hmm. um, where she actually just made a transformation photo post, you know, the other day between the two pictures, you know, that was like 2019 and now. But anyway, a ma massive amounts of change, you know, know, from where she was to where she's at right now. Mm. Uh, talk to us a little bit. Why are the women bodybuilders not doing these early shows? Because right now we only have four or five athletes in India. And New York Pro, JB, are you familiar how many girls is in there? Or Confirmed. Now, Teresa and... Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah it was it. It's a little bit silent. That, I don't know. Maybe it's about... Uh, the, um, I can say the distribution of the of the of the of, of the shows, and then when we get the points, and no stealing the points or stealing other one the points, and uh, I don't know. Why do you think all the athletes? Why are they waiting, Teresa? Because you're not. No, um, and here's the, here's the reason why. So I <laughs> actually wanted to bring this to attention just to the um, IFBB and NPC as well because we need to have a designated off season. People can't continuously keep running into these shows and creating these health issues because people just don't have any time to let the body heal and recover. Yeah, so correct. if you look at where the Olympia is at now, it's at the very end of the year. You know, mm -hmm. Rising Phoenix is also at the end of the year. Correct. So in order for anybody to have any type of like, you know, relaxation or even just a mental break from bodybuilding, oh, yeah. they, you can't jump right into that and make improvements and jump into an early show. So it's going to be the ones like myself who actually stopped competing you know, and took the rest of that year off that I can jump into these early ones knowing that I am coming back and proving. But the top girl, uh, we understand this for the top girls, but there's most women bodybuilders aren't the top girls, meaning they didn't qualify for rising or the Olympia. So what's their mm -hmm. excuse? That I don't know. <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I actually wouldn't even know because I'm, I'm thinking, you know, just like we, like we just talked about, you know, I'm thinking everybody coming off and then, you know, the girls that didn't place top three now, you know, all have to, you know, requalify to, you know, to get back up there. So yeah. that I actually, I have no clue. And there's a lot of girls that are on that um, list this year that are not competing, I you know, know, that have had some, you know, medical issues or they're just taking the year off. So it's a pretty wide open, you know, year with female bodybuilding. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, and quick thing, how do you, what's your opinion on the women's bodybuilding? Uh, it's only top three who's qualified. Yeah. Do you think that's okay? Or do you think that's not fair? Or what do you think? I don't, I personally don't think it's fair, you know, just because we're at that, that top bracket and the men also get that top five placing and then we get, you know, jarred at three, you know, mm -hmm. and when people worked very, very hard, I, my heart went out to the two that got fourth and fifth in the Olympia last year, because, you know, you, you leave there knowing you're coming back yeah. and you made it, you know, you made that top five and you're automatically just going to get that invite. And then it was like a couple months after that, they announced that four and five have to requalify. I mean, I'd be devastated, you know, because yeah. you work so hard to actually like get to that top five placing and now <clears> you got to be top three. So I feel like it just gets a little bit more harder, you know, to, to do. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 sad it's for Muna, Muna Porsaye and uh, Irene Anderson. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially Irene Anderson living all the way up in Sweden. It's not the yeah. same. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. she's in, in Mexico right now with Hella. Yeah, she's, uh, <laughs> yeah. she's there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Teresa, 2022, this season, um, the top, Alicia Young, I don't know if she's going to come back or not, uh, Monique Jones, uh, she's not on prep right now, and she did not compete last year, Margie, I don't know, I heard something that we don't know, um, Hella Trevino is not competing this year, um, we have new girls, Moom, not Porsche, just really mm. making her way. We have Michaela Acock coming in. We have Irene Anderson, and obviously the, the unbeatable almost, Andrea Shaw. <laughs> uh, 
Well, first of all, Andrea Shaw, are you impressed, Teresa? I'm very impressed. I actually got the chance to, you know, have a little one-on-one -on -one with her at the Arnold this past year. You know, I ran into her and she's just, she's an amazing, like, just all around beautiful woman. And her physique is like just on point. You know, there's not one thing really missing from that girl at all. You know, so she's a, a perfect, you know, example of what female bodybuilding is. By the way, so where, by the way, where does the way. Okay, JB, yeah. yeah. By the way, what's your opinion about, uh, I think um, Andrea needs a little bit more uh, muscle, uh, muscle development on the shoulders. What's your opinion about that? I, I mean, I, I, I didn't even really catch that. Because <laughs> so, I was just looking at all the other stridations and the glute tie-ins and, and all that stuff. But as a whole, like when I look at her just as a, as a beautiful woman's bodybuilder, yeah. she's put together from head to toe. Uh, okay. No, 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 just it's diplomatic. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. When you say beautiful, is that important for you? To stay it is. feminine and beautiful? It is. Yeah, I, um, I, I just signed in to do a woman's documentary. Um, and it's with there's been i think there's three of us in it and it's to teach people like what female bodybuilding is about like the femininity you know the balance the symmetry show a little bit of our, our life you know and how we do things and stuff like that so that's going to be actually being filmed this entire year you know and they're going to follow me up into the olympia so we got is it this beyond is bodybuild beyond body yes, yes yep yeah who started yep. two girls um, well, in the sizzle reel, I don't recognize the other girl. She was, a, I think, a fitness or figure competitor, and the other, the second girl was Margie. Oh, okay, cool, mm -hmm. cool. So, so you're gonna show us, uh, so the girls who are not feminine then and not as pretty. What can uh, that's wrong to say, but not <laughs> as uh, that's not correct word to say. Not as feminine, you can say. Uh, what are they supposed to do then? I, I mean, I just, there's a, there's that line that I don't want to cross, you know, and to, to teach the future generations, you know, that, Hey, this is female bodybuilding. You don't have to, you know, take certain things or cross that line or look a certain way. Like I feel like everybody's allowed to do whatever they want, you know, and this is my personal vision of what female bodybuilding is. You know, now if you speak to somebody else, they may have a whole nother vision and say that I, I'm, I'm nothing, you know, like, or mm. I, I don't, I need more size or this or that, but this is my personal vision. So mm. I'm going to bring the best version of myself and how I feel I want to represent myself. But somebody else, like I said, may have a different thought, you know, uh, whenever they look at that. That's good. So there are different supplements that you wouldn't take, you're saying, because yeah. it could have that all the girls are willing to take and you get those mm -hmm. side effects. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I just, I just, I, I, I stay away from certain things. I'm very good on my health and that's why I've been here. I've been here for 15 years. You know, this mm -hmm. is my 15th year competing. I have longevity in the sport and I just, I don't, I'm, I'm not stupid whenever it comes to that type of stuff. 15 years. So you started <laughs> when you were, when you were what, 15 then or something? No, like, it, <laughs> like back in 2000, I'm 38. So it was like 2006 was my first show. Um, so I was in my twenties, like my 22, 23 years. And JB, she's only 38, meaning and she's been in the sport for 15 years. Can we remember, and she still looks <clears throat> facially like this. <laughs> can, you, can you remember anyone else doing this? That's active today. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you, uh, you always surprise me with a question, so uh, I'm not prepared. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> that's, uh, women, women bodybuilders, they come and go. They don't stay always, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, it's, it's, there's a lot that you've seen, like two and done, you know, but they'll be good. You know, they'll win and stuff, but in their they'll pro shows, good. they'll get pro qualified, but then they either come up with medical conditions or issues, you know, that they can't move on. You know, so mm -hmm. it's finding a nice, healthy balance, both mentally and physically, you know, in order to flip the switch when you're ready to get going and competing, uh -huh. you know, where you can shut things out and show up and win. Mm. So yeah. where do you see yourself in this? Because as you said, this women's bodybuilding season, me and JB has discussed, it's pretty after Andrea Shaw, now what hell is not there. Obviously, if Margie is competing, obviously we have her instantly in the top three. But other than that, how do you see yourself? What's your goal? My, my original goal was literally, I want that top five spot, you know, at the Olympia, because I wanted to secure a, a top place for me to come back and actually have a full year off of nothing but growth to constantly come back and be better. Um, but now it kind of moved things up a little bit and I need to get that top three placing. 
So it's to qualify, get your qualification, and, you know, place top three at the Olympia. Are we doing rising? I'm thinking about it. I just saw that it was posted, and I think it's in November. So it's an, yep. obviously invitational. So I'm pretty sure I'll probably, you know, apply to that. I'll talk it over with Coach and see what he wants to do. Yeah. Is it hard to peak in November and December? See, again, like, I'm not I'm – not, crazy on stuff so it's hmm. it's easy for me to like back off get back on get back off get back on because it doesn't affect me you know where hmm. others it, it's just a lot of hardness you know with how long you're going to drag this out you know and you know did they just come out of a show that was in july or august you know and they're having less time than i am because if listen i go in i went indie win new york whatever i have all this time off for me to go and do november's you know and then hmm. i take a couple weeks off you know and then boom we're back at the olympia so it's it's just juggle, juggle and balance, you know, with how, how long you can sustain that. That's a plan. Mm. So in the pro, you're, you're going for, the, the, it's all the win you're going for, correct? Yes. I, well, I if not, it, it's New York, but I'm going to win Indy because that's what I want to do. And I need to do these two shows and I need to qualify because we are renovating our gym this year and we're oh. moving it. So I need the time <laughs> from... You know, after that show, in between, to get my gym up and running and all the equipment moved to the new location. Mm, wow! Yeah, this is this is this is JB. Yeah, this so. is going to be good. We yeah. we we're waiting for the Teresa versus Stephanie. Can we yep. get them out? Two wo in women's bodybuilding, they never do two women call out. Almost. Why is that? What was that? That in women's bodybuilding, we don't see two women call outs. Why is that? There should be if there if I'm, there's more if there's more than like you know five people or so you know where no, they I should mean, be what when, it, when the two winners are going out you know to fight like we see with Brad oh, and oh, William Bonac and you know yeah I don't I don't know why they don't do that I mean unless it's just one of those things that like whenever they come out for the pose out pose down like that's whenever you just need to target and like literally get in front of the one that you know you're fighting for and put on a show. You know, a lot of people, I feel that pose down, they don't move. They stay in that one little spot and they don't like, you know, target those people that they know are, you know, the, the problem there. Mm -hmm. What last question. Do you have a song routine for us? Is it decided? It is decided. Can you snitch? No. <laughs> uh, is it, is it, yeah. is it pop? Is it what? Is it pop music? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like, um, just, it's about me. You know what I mean? It's a song that I really got involved with. I picked a, I have a different posing coach because we needed it for the documentary that we're filming. Mm -hmm. She is a professional dancer in Slippery Rock University in the Pittsburgh. So it's very, it's a lot different. It's bodybuilding movements, but there's a lot of more art to it, you know, this time around. So Ooh. I've always been the like, best posing award. So I'm really curious mm -hmm. to see how this takes off for this year. Can you say the artist? I think it's Kesha. Oh. Okay. Yes. This will be good. This will be good. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you for coming back to spice up women's bodybuilding even more. Absolutely. Uh, we <laughs> see fans love you. And on your Instagram, you're sponsored by Gaspari. You got full. Tell us all your sponsors, by the way. Okay. So Gaspari, <laughs> um, okay. I have, I'm with Wolfpack, um, Liquid IV, Flex Pro Meals, Stage Ready Hair, BB Custom Suits. And there's probably a bunch that I'm actually missing, <laughs> but those are pretty much the ballpark of them. Are you still with Gaspari as well or? Yeah, yes, I'm with Gaspari. So I don't know yeah. if you caught my video, I picked him up. I never met Rich in person and then I met him in person at the Arnold and then I just picked him up. <laughs> JB, it was yep. just like some of them, you know, those little guys in the videos with women bodybuilders, you know, the type <laughs> yeah. of little. Yeah, yeah. I, I did too. Gaspari was woofy. Yep, I saw the picture, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was laughing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was he insulted? No. No, because like, well, Alana, she she made me pick her up first. And then she's like, we need to do something more for TikTok. So she's like, pick Rich up. And I was like, how much do you weigh? And he's like, 208. I'm like, let's go. Let's try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, st he stays oh, in great shape, uh, Rich Gaspari, still. Oh, yeah, he does. I mean, he's, he's an awesome guy. Awesome, you know, company. I literally, I use all their products you know there's what's not your, one what's your favorite product from this bar i you use the way, way isolate mm. yeah mm. i like those was it plasma jet back in the day jb plasma jet yeah 
Yeah. yeah. yeah we have, uh, I'm using the size on now. So the size yeah. on. Health, yeah. Size so on they've, they've got a lot of products. There's some new ones coming out for gut health too. So. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Teresa, before you go, can we see some muscle? Or, or are you, <laughs> are you, oh. aren't you wearing a tank top under there, Teresa? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's get even more ratings. Okay, we will stop okay. with that then. Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, JB, yeah. say something to Teresa before we go. Okay, thank you very much, Teresa, for coming on and um, responding so quickly for, for, for the request. Thank you very much. I hope we can get you on after the show. Absolutely. Whenever you guys need me, I'm here. Shoot me a message. Thank you okay. very much. So Thank you very much. And good Bye luck. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you. Bye-bye.